I think it's Philip's birthday. Okay, okay. The recording is starting now. So let's. You are just off. How, how, how old are you, Carrot? Can you hear me? Or he I doesn't want hear to tell his age. Oh, okay. Or maybe he, he just doesn't want to tell his age. So can we all just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can we all just sing a happy birthday to me, Carrot? Absolutely. Okay. Guys, let's look at our bikes. Aya, Abdullahi, yeah. Rodolph, Liscano. <laughs> happy birthday, Carrot. <laughs> happy birthday, Carrot. <laughs> happy birthday, Carrot. <clears throat> Carrot, happy, happy birthday, birthday. Carrot. Yeah. <laughs> I see no one wants to sing, so yeah. Happy birthday, Carol. Uh yeah. Okay, okay, great. Uh so yeah, okay. So I think Aaron wants to give uh some feedbacks on the C V so let's let me just uh give uh okay. I think yeah. there are only eight people. Okay, I think we can start. Aaron over to you. That, so sorry, my camera is still on weekend mode. So thanks everyone for putting, uh, getting their CVs in. I think overall the CVs, I think are quite a bit uh, stronger than any batches I've seen in the past, which is good. There was only one CV where I looked at it and thought, okay, I'm, <clears throat> I'm refusing to review this because it's definitely not ready. Um, I wanted to go through the points and one, usually I've seen sort of half where it's, clearly no thought put into it. So I think the level of preparation is good. Um, I wanted to go through the formatting, the skills, education, work experience, the summaries, and then the overall presentation. So I think the formatting was mostly good. Um, there remain some people who are stuck to unusual templates and a pet peeve of mine, which uh, I'm not sure if it's a term you're familiar with, but when people say that the template doesn't allow me to change this, so I'm not gonna change this, I find that to be, uh, I don't understand that sort of comment. So even if you get a template, even if it's from a template that was provided by us, we have to make sure that the formatting uh, works. And I think the formatting has been mostly good. Um, I would encourage everyone to have another look to make sure that all the details are right, that there's no unusual spacing, that if somebody skims your CV, that they understand um, what are the important things that you've been doing. But I think formatting is mostly good. Um, the skill listings, I think, are okay. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more thought put into uh, what's there, and I think that'll be part of the iteration process. One example is uh, we realized, or we were talking on Friday, the vector database listings were missing. And I would have expected that somebody from uh, one of the very many generative AI people would have uh, flagged that and said, look, uh, what about Pinecone? What about WeV8? And I don't think I saw it on anyone's listing or on very, very few. So I think getting that skill listing right is important. And there's a there's a why which is behind that. And the, the why is when somebody, you only have 10 seconds to get somebody's attention when uh, you're applying for a, you've applied and they're gonna be skimming your CD. If you've gotten through the automated selection, um, you have that sort of 10 seconds. And getting the right skill listings is important, I think, for two reasons. One is getting through the automated selections. And two, people, they they want to see things that they already know. And if they're looking to hire you to do something that uh, they want you to be productive right away, having that listing there takes away this worry of, does this person know ABC? Even if you say you're a generative AI engineer, um, writing down that you're familiar with vector databases, writing down that you've done regs, getting those keywords right, and the same is true for data engineering, the same is true for ML engineering, getting those keywords right in the skill listings is important. Some people have been very successful at, um, <clears throat> so, and, the, and part of the reason why we're forcing you to be narrowly focused is in choosing the right skill listings, it shows that you know you already know what the domain is expecting. So we have some people who have listed everything, right? They've gone down to NumPy, they've gone down to Scikit-Learn, 
and they've just thrown the whole kitchen sink at it. But you have to remember what sort of job you're going for. Um, you're going for a job where you, they want you to be productive. They're not hiring you because they want to teach you. They're hiring you because they want you to be able to use those tools. Now, if you don't really understand uh, what the type of what your employer may be looking for, you will struggle. And so I think in most cases, 10 to 15 different skills appropriately presented. And some people have even put together a skill listing, which is organized in a nice way. So they've talked about, let's say, the different software or the languages that they know, and then they break it down into um, the different uh, platforms or frameworks that they're they're familiar with. So I think this getting the skill listing right is uh, is something that everyone should be working on. And honestly speaking, I think it'll be each and every person will have to keep iterating on that uh, every week. The summaries, I think, are similar. I think the summaries that I saw today, this morning, are much improved. And so I think we're getting there. And I would like, uh, so I would like two things. One is you have to keep working on your summaries week on week. And you'll see that um, if once you really narrow in and you find the summary that works for you uh, and uh, it aligns with what employers are looking for, it'll sort of pop, it'll start to work. People, so now my, my camera's woken up. Um, it'll start to work and you'll see that uh, employers will sort of understand that, uh, yeah, I think basically your interview hit rate will go up. What I've seen in the past is very specific, uh, actionable summaries tend to work better. So we want to get away from uh, very generic things where you say, I can do anything. But if you're very clear about this is what I can do and this is the stage of development that I'm at, that tends to work better. Um, and I think the second part, and this is where I'd like to see iteration every week, is you have to tell your story. Now we have some people in the cohort who have a uh, very different work experience before they came here and they want to switch into something new. We have some people who have relevant technical expertise, including good jobs, and they want to make a change. Now your summary is basically your, it's not your 30 second elevator pitch, it's your 10 second statement, or within those 10 seconds, you want to be believable. You want people to understand that, okay, I understand where this person is coming from. I understand that this person may have uh, taught at a university for a couple of years, and they've now changed their skill profile such that they can contribute to what it is that I'm doing today. Now, that story is going to be different for every person, but I want everyone to be iterating and to, that story to be very clear. Why should you give me an interview? Where have I come from and where am I going to? And then the last two points that I wanted to talk about were education and work experience. So in education, I think by and large, I've seen quite a uh, quite a few people or very few people who have talked at all about their math skills. Um, I think it depends on the job that you're going for, but in many cases, getting the math skills right or getting the math skills listed there is useful. Um, it probably is getting the math skills are not going to, or listing your math skills is not going to get you the interview. But when you get a second check, when somebody's going a little bit deeper into your CV, uh, I think it'll be useful for you to be able to say, I didn't just learn programming from a boot camp, but I have gone through and I understand some of the foundations of the math that is driving the work that I'm doing. And that's not necessarily useful on day two, but once you get into year two, year three, year five, then the person who understands the math is going to be able to make better progress than the person, uh, and I, I'll come to that in a second, um, than the person who's just done sort of purely online learning and they, yeah, they understand how to write code, but they don't understand the math that's behind it. So in terms of education, I would like to see that, um, especially for those of you who have done more advanced math, math courses, right? Some people are teaching courses, some people are teaching math. It's really to your advantage, I believe, to be able to uh, to showcase that and to give people an idea of what it is that um, is underpinning the work that you've done. Um, I think the work experience is uh, by and large pretty weak uh, and I would like to see everyone put a little bit of work into that. Um, your work experience is your chance to, if you've gotten somebody's attention and you have said, so let's just 
go through a CV, a typical CV. So they see your name. It's probably an unfamiliar name to most people. If your name was John Smith, it would be easier. Your names, there's no John Smiths here, fine. Uh, you, somebody's having a second look. They see that you're in a different country, fine. They read your professional summary and perhaps they're thinking, okay, this person could be, uh, it sounds like this person knows what they're talking about. For those of you who have work experience, and there are quite a few of you who do, this is your chance to say, this is not just a generative AI experience or ML experience that I've gotten from a course or that I've done on my own, but I've actually worked. And to be able to make that, uh, the, the value of having acquired those skills or to be able to, be able to demonstrate those skills at work is uh, it gives a lot more confidence and it increases your chance of getting that interview. So what does that mean? It means that if you have said that I am, and this is why I would like to move away from soft skills stuff, because I think that anyone can just write, I'm a good communicator. I mean, I had to make fun of a few people where they said, you know, I'm a great communicator, great attention to detail. And then their CV was full of punctuation mistakes and spelling mistakes, right? Well, okay, you know, you can write anything you want about attention to detail, but if you can't get your CV right, then there's a problem. Um, so when we talk about work experience, what we're recommending is to do it in X, Y, Z format. So I achieved X, as measured by Y, by doing Z. And there's almost, and I think that's the right order, I achieved X uh, as measured by Y. Uh, I achieved X uh, as measured by Y by doing Z. And there's almost nothing that you can't put into that format. And as you progress in your careers, um, there's a big difference between the last CV I read, uh, the, the top level, the most recent work experience was I made websites. Um, and that is, it's kind of sad because you're losing a big opportunity. So one is I made a website, who cares? It doesn't tell me anything about the type of website, what's the scale of the website, did I do a good job on making the website or did I just throw out some sort of website that was never used? Um, another way to have framed the same thing would have been to say, I uh, redesigned the company website in uh, with an average number of site visitors of uh, 50,000 per month um, using technology. So I had redesigned the website and with brackets average uh, flow of about 50,000 users per month. In 50% of the time that was required, uh, that was estimated and brought it in under budget using technologies ABC deployed it on platform one, two, three, um, and achieved the project goal of on budget uh, extendability and reduced site load time by one, two, three, four, five. So that's, that's maybe too many different points for one bullet point, but I think the development time would be one bullet point. The site load time would be another bullet point. And for each of these, it's an opportunity to showcase your soft skills, your technical skills, the platforms that you've used, the fact that you've collaborated, um, all of those points above. And actually, many of you are also le leaving opportunities on the table. I only saw one person who talked, uh, who used uh, his or her 10 Academy experience of being a team leader or a group leader and mentioned that. Because at university, I'm sure all of you have done projects, all of you have done uh, teamwork, all of you have done fourth year projects or third year projects or whatever the system is in your country of origin. And showcasing that and telling that story is what uh, is currently how the sort of employment system is working. And so for anyone who's not doing that and simply wants to write, I went to University ABC and I got GPA one, two, three, I think you are, uh, you're selling yourself short. So just to summarize, I think work experience, we have to do it in, I would like to see everyone put their work experience in X, Y, Z format because it forces you to say, this is specifically what I achieved as measured by whatever metric your company asked for. And I'm, I'm guessing most of your companies were not organized enough to have a, a very, very accurate metric. However, if you did your job well, as I'm sure many of you did, then you will be able to create that metric. So maybe it is, um, 
deploying new technology, or maybe it's getting more users or reducing site load time, or it is integrating a new feature, um, blah, blah, blah. And you want, you want to show not only that you did it, but why what you did was in some ways uh, special. And education, showcasing your math courses, showcasing um, any project work that you did, any leadership uh, stuff that you did, maybe your student union, class representative, you were helping wheelchair people who are disabled in some way, maybe you were you led a protest to the university, uh, leadership for a reason X, Y, Z. This is a chance to show that you are a, a well-rounded person. You've done other stuff. And those are the those are the most effective ways to showcase uh, your soft skills, but also your hard skills. Because if you tell me that you designed a website, fine. But if you told me that I've designed a website using React and Node, and I deployed it on a on a new instance of an AWS server, and I set up real time health monitoring along with uh, notifications to users, and my uptime was ninety nine point nine percent, despite a side load of, of 50,000 users a month, as well as the spike of 200,000 users when we launched a new product, I start to think, okay, now this guy first, that gives me a lot more detail, but second, I like that level of detail because he is, or she is already talking about things that are relevant to me. For those of you who are doing something completely different, um, maybe you did uh, marketing before, you can still find a way to make that experience relevant. Um, you just have to work a little bit harder. So the fact that you may have to emphasize different things, you're not gonna be able to emphasize that I deployed or coded or used technology one, two, three, but the fact that you can uh, exceed the goals that were set by your team leader or your management is still relevant. And so I think the last point that I want to make is I would, I know the time is uh, we're sort of forcing you guys to do it quickly, which is fine. Uh, on the other hand, you guys aren't doing anything else, so you should have enough time to do this. I would like to encourage you guys to review each other's CVs or to share it with a friend or share it with two friends in the group and just ask them to have a second look um, because there's probably stuff that uh, they won't see, that you won't see, that they might see. I remember one of my first CVs when I was in first year university, I made a stupid mistake of putting uh, I was putting state and uh, I was putting city and state, and I put California, comma, CA, as opposed to the city and the state name. And I didn't notice it. And then one, actually, somebody during an interview asked me about that. He's like, isn't that a mistake? I was like, oh, that was, that was kind of embarrassing. So I have, have somebody review those and spend a little bit of time iterating on them this week. And then week on week, you will continue to improve your CVs or the people who continue to their, to improve their skill listings, their summaries, their CVs, and the way they present it, and more than anything else, the story that they tell, I believe that they will be the most successful. So that's that's the feedback that I wanted to give. Any questions before we continue on the stand-up? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Aaron. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a CV uh, with those uh, details, but it's a four page. Uh, making it, it a two page. Two even, uh, I left lots of details, including the, the math course that I took, uh, the schools that I took, like for two weeks school course, uh, even it, it was in HPC. Uh, so making those into pages is not. You can, no, it is possible. You can even get it to one page, but you need to get focused. So if you don't know what sort of job, if you know exactly what sort of job you're going for, then it's very easy to make that. You have to get that focus. You can get it down to one page. Okay, I'm trying. Uh, it's possible. I mean, let, let, let us, because you you can take the most experienced person. I don't need I think Mark Zuckerberg can have a one page CD. Well, it's possible, right? Because the only thing you're trying, your CV only has one goal. It's to get you an interview. It only has one goal. And after that, this nobody's going to look, nobody's really going to look at your CV anymore. So what are the relevant points in your decades of life that say that I'm competent to take up this job and you should interview me? 
just pick those. And everyone has their own story. I think AI, your story is very clear. You have a strong math background. You have a strong teaching background. You've now layered on um, technology development onto that. And you have to answer the question and make it very explicit. What sort of job am I looking for? This is why I am ready to take my extensive math background and take up an entry level job in the generative AI field. And this is where I see my career going. That's it. OK. It has to be, the, yeah. the more focused you make it, the easier it'll be. But the hardest part is making that decision of what do I not want to be? You okay. have to be willing to let, you know, the field is enormous. So you have to be willing to say, I don't want to be any of those other things. I'm ready for a junior level generative AI engineer job. Once you feel like you can sleep well with that, it becomes a lot easier. I think a lot of okay. the worries and a lot, the reason why we put everything is, we're not sure is that enough. You know, am I, what, what, if, what if I get a great job being, I don't know, uh, a, a tutor or something? You, you, people keep their options open. The purity of purpose makes your life easier. OK, thank you. I believe so. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Rudolf and Alexander, and then I'm going to hand it this, the, send it back to Rudolf. Uh, good morning, Arun. Good morning, good morning Rudolf. Yeah. First of all, thank you for your feedback. And it is very helpful. I have one concern. It is, uh, it is regarding the how we will uh, showcase our math skills. Uh, I would like to know if you will, you will list the costs that are relevant to the job you want to apply for. Uh, or I don't really understand how we can showcase that. Now. If you can. Uh, uh, yeah, I, so in your case, I would list the relevant courses or projects. Uh, I would list those courses, relevant courses or projects under your education. And if you've done anything uh, exceptional that's useful beyond that, then I could put it under projects. But remember that it's only going to be during a second check, maybe during the interview, most interviewers have their your CV open, and maybe there's something that you want to talk through and to be able to say, um, yeah, I've taken an advanced statistics course, or I've done a one year long project in, um, I don't know, applied uh, applied geometry, or I've done, you know, I've studied pure mathematics. But it's part of the story that you want to tell. So which courses have you taken? And how is that relevant to uh, the story? I would put it under education. And if you've done something like a thesis or a, a project, or you have publications, then you can put it under projects or under publications. Um, and in the story that you want to tell, if you believe that your math background uh, is really relevant, then you should probably highlight that. So I think AI, in a summary, he's, he said, I'm an applied mathematician. That's great. So then that's one of that's a distinguishing factor, because if I see a CV and I have uh, 10 CVs in front of me and one person is a proper mathematician and understands um, how to code and do the engineering side, then all of a sudden this person has two heads, not just one. And that's to your advantage. So you that should be part of your story. And I think you could include it in your summary if it's to that level. Otherwise, I would put the relevant courses under education. Or projects. Yeah, Alexander. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, my question is related to the experience. Uh, when, uh, based on your suggestion, we should put our experiences in XYZ format. But uh, when, when I try to put the, my experience in XYZ format, some of my experience have no metric to measure this value. Take an example, I have an experience preparing in curriculum. Mm -hmm. So how to measure the value uh, after uh, of students, whether students' performance or by what case I calculate its uh, effect that what I prepared uh, curriculums. Mm -hmm. So what what are you trying to show with that experience? I think that's the decision that oh. we have to make. So if you want to show oh, okay. that you are a good project manager, you can say that okay. the students were happy. If you can say that you're a very good mathematician, you could say that the students perform very well. 
if you wanted to say that um, I'm a hard worker, you can say that uh, I got it done in half the time. If you want to show that you were the best in your, you were very competitive in your sort of top 10%, you could say that your work became the standard that others took up. Um, if you want to say that you're fancy, you can say, I got an award for it. There's, you can always present it. I mean, you guys should look at some of these American CVs where somebody's working as a waitress or a waiter, and they'll say things like, you know, I increased the amount of tips that I got, I reduced service time, people smiled at me, I got happy. I mean, people, you can, you can frame anything. You need to work on your sales uh, skills a little bit. But it's a question of the story that you want to tell. So you can put... I, I would actually, you know what, public challenge. Give me anything uh, on Slack, and if I can't get it into XYZ format, I will buy that person uh, a coffee. Okay, so take it as a public challenge. If it can't be put into XYZ format, uh, happy to, next time we meet, buy you a coffee, a macchiato, or whatever it is that you like to drink. Maybe let's keep it non-alcoholic. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I got the idea. Uh, the second, my second question is uh, when we put uh, our education in chronological order, um, my certification is counselor first because uh, the academic certification is 2023 and my university degree is before. So, can I put the certification before the degree? It should, I think the normal format is reverse chronological order, most recent first. But the degree, but the, the, did the, the certification uh, comes the degree? When you I put the I don't, understand, I don't understand your question. What's your question? Okay, okay. Uh, the normal way of putting our education is in chronological order. The recent one comes well, first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that, if, you, if, if you feel like your degree is more relevant, then you can break that rule. Okay. Yeah. 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 I get. I mean, it's it's your CV, right? So then, just just recognize people may ask, but if you, it it's all part of the story that you need to tell. If you feel like your degree is more relevant than the, uh, you know, what we're what we're providing here is not a degree. It's like a finishing okay. a finishing program. So it's this is where you'd probably need to spend a little bit of time thinking about. It. But the normal is reverse chronological order. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that Sorry. Make sense? My last question. No. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 I get it. Yeah. My last question is when you put our professional summary, the, the con I, and my view, the the content of the pro professional summary uh, contains my education and pro my pro previous project experience and work experience. But when I evaluate my my work experience and my current uh, uh, tech stack, uh, there is a difference. So, uh, in my way, I try to generalize my professional summary, then academic project experience by leaving my work experience at the university because most of the uh, industry skills are lack lack in the teaching experience. So, I conclude my professional summary later to my ten academic project summary as work experience. So the problem, the, the problem is, if I look at your summary, and I have it open right now, the one you sent uh, before, <clears throat> it's not believable, right? Because you say you have extensive experience. Um, you're, I mean, it's, so then if you really wanted to be very honest, you have to say you have only a little bit of experience. Okay. And so I think this is where we're trying, what I'm proposing is that you say you do have work experience in a different field and you're now applying it somewhere else. Because otherwise mm -hmm. it's very difficult for you to say that I have this, and this is a problem in the overall market, right? People want to hire people with experience, but there are nobody's willing to give the first job. So we have to use the projects and use your previous work experience and use everything that we've put together as a way to make things a little bit faster. We hope that uh, with the projects that we've provided, you are able to apply for jobs that are requiring up to two years of experience. Now you have work experience. You've worked for uh, how long? You've worked for four years. So why wouldn't you write that? Why wouldn't you write, I have at least, uh, I have four years of work experience? Because you do. 
Remember, it's about getting the interview. And you have to be honest. We don't want to lie. But you do have four years of work experience. The fact, and you, you're being very open and saying, my work experience is teaching. What are you teaching? Uh, oh my god, you've, te you've taught people machine learning and Python. Yeah, I yeah. ICT officers. Oh my god, Alexander. Why, why would... <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know what, Alexander? You, you are, you are like, you're like the... <laughs> you're like the single man who works at a dating agency. And you're like, you know what, I can't find a date. I can't find a date. But you're working at a dating agency. Are you being serious? How are you starving while, while being a cook at a restaurant? You're teaching people machine learning. Yeah, yeah. So then why wouldn't you emphasize that? You have four years, in, in, of, four in, years of experience teaching in, people in machine learning. No, for two years experience. I conclude the other courses in machine learning. I have experience wow. only two years in machine learning in the other courses are two years in sub four years, but I conclude uh, the other course in machine learning making faces. Okay, I'm just seeing, I see four years, 2019 to 2023 at the University of Gondar. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But then you, this is where, this is the work. You gotta, you gotta tell that story, right? This is where um, it's half and half. Half of it is technical experience and half of it is knowing how to sell it. Yes, yes. So that's the job. That's your job today. So, so uh, I could incorporate machine learning uh, experiences. Yes, uh, yes. Please, please. Okay, okay, okay. I may do it. What do you want to do? Okay, okay. Okay. My feeling, my feeling is, my, my but, feeling okay. is beyond too much. Then tell me, why would you not? Why would you not? Okay. Maybe much, most of the machine learning experiences is uh, beyond the uh, general TBI. So uh, maybe the hearing manager is looking for mostly on the GNI. So I, I shift to the machine learning to the to 10 academies. That you, you, but, that, but that's part of the story, right? I used to. No, okay, okay, nobody, okay, nobody, nobody in the world has. OK, maybe there's 10 people in the world who have more than uh, more than one or one and a half years of generative AI experience. Okay. It didn't really exist, okay. right? Okay. Like, okay. Okay. No, thank really. you. Thank you. I will. I will. That has, that has to be the story. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is mine. And I think it's good to tell that story, right? Remember, you want, and I guess we will keep repeating, your first, all of this is just to get the interview. Then when we you get the interview, then we will help you prepare to get through that interview. But you have to, in the same, in the same, for the same reason why you get up in the morning and you wash your face and you wear nice clothes, it's because you have to be taken seriously. You have to, you have to align to what society expects. And in the same way, we have to align your CV and tell that story of like when you go and meet somebody for a work appointment, you kind of wear nice clothes because that's what they expect. And the meeting is more likely to go well if you don't show up wearing your pajamas. In the same way, your CV and your presentation has to be aligned in such a way that um, you're telling that story. And they're more likely to say, huh, OK, this guy has something that uh, makes me want to talk to him or her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Okay. All right, if you guys have questions, we everyone has their own Slack group. You can use that to write. Let's please use the group. But I'm gonna hand the I'm gonna hand the stand-up uh, back to Rodas. But uh, I'm public challenge has been issued. If you guys have want to uh, if you think there's something, some real work experience that you have that can't be put into XYZ format. And uh, if I can't do it, you can put it in the random channel. And you guys can vote if I'm just cheating and just not doing it well. Then I'll buy whoever sub whoever put the challenge out. I'll buy them a macchiato, yeah, or a coffee or juice or whatever. All right, I gotta run. Back to you, Liz. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah.
Aaron has been going through all your submissions, uh, you know, to give you personalized feedback. And, you know, we don't want you to take it lightly as it will get you ready for the rest of your job hunt with us or without us. And I hope all of you will take this comment into consideration when um, we're submitting your CV today. So, yeah, even though all reviews were completed on Saturday, we, we just wanted to give you more time for you to put more effort and uh, thought into it. So, yeah, it, it was great. So we can just uh, move to our uh, usual roundtable check. Uh, even though we're running out of time, we can just like, take one, uh, maybe five to six people. So, yeah. Let's start with the birthday boy. I think his, I hope he's in the call. Uh, Carol, are you in here? Oh, yeah, he's in here. So, how was your weekend? How are you feeling? Please share us. And we're sad we weren't invited. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rodas. Uh, so, the weekend, my birthday was on Saturday, and I had a blast. I was in every day that was out of town and i took the no screen time seriously and i didn't touch <laughs> my screen for the whole day and it was fun and thank you <laughs> and thank you for everyone who wished me a best day and everyone one of you actually uh and yeah so uh moving to the stand up uh, i didn't do much on the weekend uh, i was having a free uh, screen free time as recommended by you guys uh yeah that's uh all by on my side and i wasn't in town that was uh, that's why i didn't invite you guys thank you though okay okay that's great that's good to hear uh i hope you don't want to tell us your age so i'll just i'll just skip this question so yeah okay next <laughs> it's okay actually i'm 28 and two days old Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Happy yeah, 28. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so good. The same brush. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, okay, great. So next we, uh, we will have Rodolf. And anyone who wants to speak up, please make sure to raise your hands. Uh, Rodolf, please tell us about your weekend and what's, uh, and what, what, how are you feeling? Oh, thank you, Rodas. Once again, happy birthday, K Rod. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you enjoy your weekend and you've been touching the your keyboard and your screen. That's good. Okay. Uh for the last week, at the end of the last week, I start having a, a problem with my internet connection and that slowed me down. So in the in the weekend, uh I didn't do much. And I took my I took my time to to rest as I can, and uh, so I uh, I realized that uh, uh, between now uh, uh, mid um, in, in the mid uh, after midnight the connection was working, so I just wake up early uh, on Sunday and I I did some progress. So after uh, seven a.m. it stopped working properly so that is it so i'm trying my best to to submit my deliverable today because i didn't uh in the weekend so today i will do that so this uh my update thank you okay thank you so much for both um i mean it's good that you are working but we really do want you to you know have some rest during the weekend especially on saturday and sunday that's why we are trying to avoid uh submissions during the weekends for the job search fees so yeah okay okay next we have <clears throat> Binam. Binam, you can go next okay hello uh, everyone am i on no, there's a bit of a background noise, but yes, you're audible. Okay, I'm in a car right now, but uh, it's okay. So, uh, happy birthday to Kero and everybody. I hope uh, you did well on the submissions. Or like, you took the reviews uh, very seriously, because I did. And uh, I have never received 
such a cool guy. I kind of resonated with him in my entire life, and uh, I kind of like it. Um, it is cool, so I am working on the solution uh, for the for the CV. And for the interim, I think I did not submit submit on time because I was busy doing other things, such as uh, um, finishing up my passport and stuff. So I'm very running around lately. So it's still going well. I'm fighting, and uh, yeah. So this is my update. And if there's anything new, I will ask you to start. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Pinam. And uh, and also one thing we all want you to like strictly work on your CVs today so that we won't have you know back and forth uh, while reviewing it. So I hope I really hope it will be uh, finalized today so so that we can move on to the job search to the actual job search phase uh, next week. So yeah, that's good. Okay, Lilian, Ms. Gano, then Yvonne. Lilian, you can speak up. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Good okay. morning. Good morning, Rodas. Good morning, everyone. Um, and happy birthday, Kirot. Um, the past weekend, um, as it was a screen free time for us, I was far from my screen. I haven't seen my laptop until this morning and um, I was resting. I was spending a weekend with my families and I was trying to um regain uh the energy that i will need for this week uh and i also received the feedback for my cv and today i'm planning to work on that thank you okay that's good i'm happy you all took the no screen time <laughs> seriously i made sure to put uh to put it on the schedule and you didn't disappoint <laughs> that's good uh okay miss kana you can go next Okay. Good morning, everyone, and happy birthday, Kerut. So, yeah, uh, for me as well, so Sunday was a rest, more or less, it was restful. As much as I can, I try to, to be screen free, even though it was difficult. Yeah, uh, I didn't open my PC, but I guess it's difficult to be screen free. Uh, yeah, I try to watch football games. Uh, I try to to meet some of my high school friends. Yeah, more or less it was in my nice time and it was uh, good. So when I come to my today's plan, I got valuable feedbacks on my CV on Friday. So yeah, my plan for today is to work on those feedbacks and to polish my CV more. And uh, I hope I will submit it on time. And yeah, that's my plan for today. Thank you. Okay. okay, that's good. I'm glad you had a good time during the weekend. Okay, uh, and Yvonne, you can go last. If anyone wants to speak up, please make sure to raise your hand. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So during the weekend on Sunday, I had no screen time, though it is it was difficult, honestly speaking, but I tried. Um, as for, I had a great weekend, and as for today, I plan on revamping my CV even more, and also following what Arun was saying here, and yeah, also working on the comments that I got so far. I can say so far so good. I am energetic to work through that. Yeah, thank you. That's me. Okay, okay, that's good. I see that uh, you all developed some PTSD of uh, not to touch your, your laptops during the weekend. So that's good. It's, uh, yeah, great. So, um, okay, so today we will have your CV resubmission. We will have the 10 Academy profile tutorial and the team will also be working on uh, reviewing your submissions. So yeah, I think that's all. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining the stand up. Please make sure to join uh, every day. And yeah, 
we will also be forming the groups this week. So yeah, we'll be announcing. Great. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day.